Movie crews come and go, but for some pretty prolific movies, headlines can be made when directors are fired from projects. Going beyond basic creative differences, check out some of the strangest reasons directors were fired from hit movies like Jaws, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, and American History X. Before you watch, click subscribe. You'll join our notification squad and be the first to know of new Screen Rant content. Dick Richards Steven Spielberg's biggest Hollywood break came when the director helmed the summer blockbuster Jaws and reinvented cinema as we know it. If it wasn't for the firing of initial director Dick Richards, Hollywood and Spielberg could be in a whole different place. But why exactly was Dick Richards sent out to sea? Well, when you're doing a movie about sharks, you should have some basic idea about marine life. One of the main reasons Richards was replaced with Spielberg was because the director kept referring to the deadly great white shark as a whale. Say what? Maybe he accidentally got a copy of the Free Willy script instead. But either way, Dick Richards was pretty much chum by the time Spielberg took over. <laughs> Richard Stanley On paper, an adaptation of The Island of Dr. Moreau sounds great. Marlon Brando, Val Kilmer, awesome animatronics and puppets. What could go wrong? Well, for director Richard Stanley, pretty much everything. Let's put it this way. Even the director of Jackass the Movie had more control over the stars. Poor Richard Stanley had the unfortunate circumstances of dealing with an extremely hard to work with Val Kilmer on the film set. Val threw fits, could barely speak his lines, and the studio needed someone to blame. Stanley was cast off the island and replaced halfway through production. The end result was a box office disaster, and another crazy story ideal for an unauthorized biography of Val Kilmer's life. Roger, there's only room in this band for one hysterical queen. Brian Singer Brian Singer is known for directing multiple X-Men movies, and he got the chance to take on the biography of Freddie Mercury in the film Bohemian Rhapsody. Singer dedicated a lot of time filming the movie in Europe, until suddenly he just stopped showing up. Yep, the director of his own movie decided to play hooky without explanation. After he was finally tracked down, Singer attributed his disappearing act to health problems back home. But the damage was done and Singer was fired for his bizarre actions. This isn't something that's happening places we can't do anything about it. It's happening right here. Tony K. American History X quickly became a cult classic after its release, but the film went through dozens and dozens of changes through production. Director Tony K seemed to have everything under control until the film got to the editing stage. Star and actor Edward Norton decided to try his hand at editing and completely hijacked the film from under Tony K. Naturally, a lot of politics were at play and with millions of dollars involved, K was eventually fired even though he is treated with the director's credit on the film. Brenda Chapman Pixar's world of colorful characters may seem all happy and cozy on the outside, but there is a lot of drama that goes on behind the scenes. The animation company is notorious for firing directors, removing writers, and putting new people at the helm. One of the more devastating situations may have happened to Brenda Chapman, the writer and director of Brave. After crafting a winter set story based off her own mother-daughter relationship, the Scottish rug was pulled out underneath her as she got replaced, and the film took on a much lighter tone. Enough of her content remained to award her the Oscar for Best Animated Film. The power of Christ compels you! Paul Schrader in the early 2000s, Warner Brothers decided to relaunch their Exorcist franchise with a prequel showcasing where it all began. Their choice for director was Paul Schrader, a man known for indie films like Taxi Driver. Schrader brought his unique talents to the fold and helped direct a $30 million horror feature. Even though it was complete, Warner Brothers didn't feel it had commercial appeal. They trashed his version, fired the director, and spent another $50 million on producing a different version of the same film. Both ended up getting released as Exorcist The Beginning and Dominion, prequel to The Exorcist. Bad vibrations? Richard Donner Richard Donner had the director role of a lifetime, getting the chance to film both Superman and Superman 2 at the same time. Once Warner Brothers saw the success of the first Superman, they could have stuck with Donner, but they fired the director when he was nearly done with the sequel. The production company hired a new director to add more comedy and lightheartedness to the film. The result saw a lot of mixed reviews and a sequel that did not live up to the original. Thankfully, the Richard Donner cut of Superman 2 was released in recent years and features all the footage he shot. I think he was going to say something else. When you get the answer you're looking for, hang up. Suzanne? Steven Soderbergh. 
When you have Brad Pitt cast in a film, the objective is to typically feature him as much as possible, unless you're Deadpool 2, of course. Steven Soderbergh made the mistake of minimizing Pitt's role for Moneyball as he wanted the film to be more of a realistic documentary than a dramatic recreation as the final version turned out to be. The studio chose more Pitt over Soderbergh, and the director would have been more fitting to focus on ESPN 30 for 30 on Moneyball instead of a feature-length film. John McTiernan Michael Crichton adaptations have led to a lot of box office gold, especially in films like Jurassic Park. But the film The Thirteenth Warrior would lead to one of the strangest productions and worst adaptations of his books. John McTiernan shot a majority of the film in secret, not letting studios see edits and footage until the film was nearly complete. They didn't like what they saw and hired Crichton himself to make some changes. Before directly firing McTiernan, both directors were filming different ending scenes at the same time. Crichton won out, and McTiernan was officially let go. But the film was a bomb either way. What is wrong with you? If he's a planet, how could he make a baby with your mother? James Gunn Imagine writing and directing two films and then writing the third only to be fired before production officially began. This is the circumstance Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy director James Gunn finds himself in. Once some old offensive tweets resurfaced, Disney was pretty much forced to fire the director from the gig he had become known for. Despite his firing, Gunn has been defended by the Guardians stars like Chris Pratt, Dave Bautista, and Zoe Saldana. Many fans are hoping for Disney to change their minds and rehire the successful director. I'm not buying it. Wow, well there you have it. Which firing was the craziest? Should James Gunn be rehired for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like this video, share it, and subscribe to Screen Rant on YouTube so you can stay up to date with our awesome videos. Thanks for watching.